Please open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12. And when you have that passage, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Hebrews 12, and back a few pages, 2 Timothy chapter 4. I want to talk with us today about running a good race for Jesus Christ. Chapter 11 in Hebrews is the faith chapter of the Bible. And it mentions for us the people of the Old Testament who demonstrated in their lives and their service their faith in God. Following that faith chapter, he immediately says in verse 1 of chapter 12, these words. Therefore, or wherefore, don't ever read over the therefores until you know what they're there for. <laughs> wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I want you to keep your Bibles open now to that passage and be ready after a bit to turn to 2 Timothy. Running a good race for Jesus. In this passage, he compares life and the living of life to a race. And we're all called upon to run our race. I was preaching about this one time in a church somewhere, and I talked about running a good race, that life is really a race that we all have to run. And a fellow came up to me afterwards and he said, you're right about that. Life is a rat race and sometimes it looks like the, rot the rats are winning. But I want to talk to you about the Christian race. Now, in any race, there are certain things that will be necessary. We have to prepare to run a good race. We have to be disciplined to run a good race. And we have to be ready to compete when we run a good race. We also need to be aware that in the running of a good race, there are recognitions and rewards for those who run well. I need to clear a matter with you before we look at our text. These words were written to some Christians who were going through persecution and difficulties in living the Christian life. The writer, whoever it might have been, some say it was Paul, some say others, they wanted to say to these Christians, you can run a good race in your life and bring honor and glory to the Lord, and your witness will be blessed by him. But what we need to understand is that this is a challenge 
to Christians. This is a Christian race. He is not saying to us in this passage, if you run a good race, you can be a Christian. You can win a Christian life by running a good race. But that's not what the writer says. The writer says, when you become a Christian, then you begin your race that you will run till the end of your life. We do not run to earn salvation. We run in this Christian race because we already have salvation. If you're not a Christian, this really will not help you a lot. But if you are a Christian, if you have committed your life to Jesus Christ, the moment you gave your life to him, you entered that race, which you will be running and I will be running until the end of our lives. There are certain things in this text that I want you to see, and I want you to underscore them and remember them. They will help you in your Christian journey. They'll help you to be a better Christian, and they will help you in being a better Christian to be a witness for your faith, and you will honor and glorify Jesus. First thing you want to see in the text is that this is a race that is set before us. See the words? Seeing we are all so compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin that doth easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. This race is planned because God has a plan for every one of us. It is a race that he sets out before us. God's plan for your life and for mine. We do not choose the race that we run. God sets it out for us. That will tell us that for your life, God has a definite plan. It was so from the beginning when he created you in your mother's womb. God had a plan for your life. And he wants that plan to be worked out in your life. And that plan is called the Christian race. When we give our lives to Christ, therefore, we are ready to say to him, Lord, if you will show me your plan for my life, I will do my best to follow your plan every day that I live. When Paul became a Christian on the Damascus Road, do you remember the first question he asked the Lord? He said to him, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And he spent the rest of his great life trying to do what the Lord wanted him to do. One of the best questions you can ever ask the Lord is the same one Paul asked. What wilt thou have me to do? Life is a precious gift. Life is so wonderfully made. Life is God's creation. And to know that God has a plan for each one of us ought to make us aware that we are important to him. Now, I told you last week that when I became a Christian at the age of 11, the same night the Lord called me to preach. So I've known since I was 11 years old God's plan for my life. And if I have not done a good job, it isn't God's fault, it's mine. Because he told me at that early age what his plan for my life 
was. I wish I could have done it better. If I could do it over again, I'd try to do it better. But the thing that has encouraged me all through the years is the assurance I've had in my heart that God had a plan for my life. And so does he for you. And that plan is the race that you are to run. Whatever it is, whatever God made you for, that's your race. And it is his laid out before you, his plan. I had some things I enjoyed saying to my Bonnie. And I would say them over and over again. I tried not to let a day go by without telling her that I loved her. And I did and do love her. But I would also say to her, Bonnie, when God created you in Miss Stella's womb, he made you for me. And when you were born, something wonderful happened. I think the Lord called his angel and said, come here, angel. And he pointed down to Marion, Kentucky, the birth of a little girl, Bonnie Brown. And he told that angel, he said, do you see that birth taking place down there in Marion, Kentucky? You see that little girl being born? And the angel said, yes, Lord. He said, I want you to go down there and mark that little girl for Carl. The angel said, Lord, who is Carl? He said, that's all right. I'll take care of that. So there was a little baby being born down in Bowl of Batra, Louisiana. And I know all of you know where that is, don't you? a little boy, and they named him Carl. And the angel said, Lord, I will do it. And the Lord said to him, you see to it that their pathways come together because she is for him. And that angel went to work and that angel brought our pathways together at Union University. And that angel said to me, now I've done it just like God wanted it done. I brought you together. Can I do anything else for you? And I said to the angel, don't get too far away, but I can handle it from here. And I would tell Bunny that story. And I would say to her, God made you just for me. And I thank you for being my Bonnie. I remember the last time I told her that. That was God's plan for her and for me that she should come down from the north and I came up from the south and God brought our pathways together. The race you are to run is the one God has set before you. It's his plan for your life. Danny presented two Bibles to these two fine boys today. And I heard him say, this Bible will teach you a lot and you'll learn about Jesus. That's true, boys. 
That's true. Because God has a plan for your life just like he had for Paul and for Carl and for Parker and for Dot and for Grady and for John and Joanne. The race that is set before us, God's plan. Come and see the second thing he says. When you run your race, be encouraged by those who have run the race before you. He said, seeing that we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Who are those witnesses? Well, some of them are listed in the 11th chapter. And when you go home today, I want you to read the 11th chapter. Some of them are Abraham and Moses. And God's servants. And Enoch, who walked with the Lord. The book of faith is the 11th chapter of Hebrews. Now picture a stadium. The track is laid out. The runners are down there ready to run a race. And the stands are filled with people. That's what he said. We're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Those mentioned in chapter 11 are in the stands to watch us run our race. But there are others besides them, our parents, friends we have known, church people who have now gone on to glory, but they're pictured here as being in the stadium, looking down on the race that you and I are running. And they are there to give us encouragement for the running of our race. Let's call a couple of them up and see what they have to say. The first witness we might call out of the stand might be Abraham. And we would say to him, what do you have to say to all of us who are running our race now? You ran years, yours so many years ago. And Abraham might say to all of us, I can tell you, if you will always live by faith and trust God for every day of your life, God will bless you in ways that you can't imagine. For Abraham was called to go out into a place that he had never seen and he wouldn't know about and wouldn't know where it was or what it was until he got there. And he followed God by faith and God blessed him and from his seed came the chosen people and through the chosen people came Jesus Christ. Sent from God, his only begotten son, born of the virgin, to be our savior. Abraham says, live every day by faith. Let's call Moses down and see what he would say. Moses might say to those of us who are running the race today, even when you're discouraged and it's hard, when there's opposition and sometimes trouble, 
Hold on to your faith in God, and God will bless you. Let's call Enoch down from the stands and say to him, Enoch, what would you say to all of us who are running the race today? And Enoch would say, walk with God, and God will bless you. For the Bible says, Enoch, walk with God. And he was not, for God took him. Get encouragement from the witnesses that have run the race before you. You might think of your father who lived a Christian life before you. Your mother who taught you to love Jesus. A friend that you watched and saw in his life the hand of God. And if I had time, I could tell you about so many that touched my life and encouraged me for the running of my race. But I will tell you about one. When I was a boy in Mobile, I went to the Ann Street Baptist Church and my Sunday school teacher was a blind man. He never saw my face. But every Sunday, he would have us read a verse from the Sunday school lesson and he would tell us what it meant. Sometimes he would come by my house as he did all the other boys and he would sit down on the front porch and talk to me about Jesus. He would say to us boys, don't feel sorry for me because I'm blind. He said, I have an advantage that you do not have. The first time I ever see anything, I will be looking into the face of Jesus. Seeing that we are encompassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses who encourage us to run a good race. But here's the next thing the text tells us. If you want to run a good race, you have to remove the hindrances. You have to get rid of the things that keep you from running. And so he said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Now a runner might train with weights on his ankles but when it came time for the race, the weights were taken off. If you and I will run a good race for Jesus, we have to lay aside every hindrance and the sin that does so easily beset us. If we don't, We'll lose the race. If we do, we can run a good race. What is your besetting sin? It's none of my business, but it ought to be for you. If you're interested in running a good race for the Lord Jesus Christ, lay aside every besetting sin so that you're free to run God's plan for your life. But notice the next thing he says. 
lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us, and run with patience the race that is set before you. The word patience means faithfulness. Run your race faithfully. Now others may run a better race than you. Others may be doing a better job at living their Christian lives. But every one of us can be faithful. Let us run with faithfulness the race that is set before us. Now come close, please. One thing God asks of us. Be faithful. Faithful to him, faithful to his word, faithful to our commitment, faithful to the church, faithful to share Christ, faithful to serve the Lord. Others may do it better, but we can all be faithful. Run with patience, faithfulness, the race that is set before you. Now the last thing, and don't miss this. If you want to run a good race, for the Lord. Look at verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. If you want to run well, if you want to finish the race, if you want the Lord to be proud of you, keep your eyes on Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross for us. Now, if running our race, we look at ourselves, we're going to be disappointed. If our eyes are fixed on others, we're going to be disappointed. But if our eyes are fixed on Jesus, you won't ever be disappointed in Him. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now I have a question for you. How are you coming with your race? How are you doing with God's plan? Are you going to finish the race well? At the end of the race, comes the award ceremony. And the folks who win the race receive the awards. Got news for you. We can all be winners in this race. Now turn back, please, to 2 Timothy, 
chapter 4. Don't miss this. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Look, please, at verse 6. This is the last letter that Paul wrote. And look what he said in the last chapter. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I've fought a good fight. I have finished my course. What do we call the place where they run? The race course. I have finished my course. I have finished my race, he said. I have kept the faith. But don't miss the next verse. Therefore, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, but not to me only, but unto all those who love his appearing. Paul said, I finished my race. And the judge himself will present me with the award, the crown of righteousness. And when you and I finish our race, he will present us with the award of a good race, the crown of righteousness. Wherefore, seeing that we are encompassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin that doth so easily beset us and run with faithfulness the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Years ago, I was at Ridgecrest. I was a student at Union. And I heard the pastor of the First Baptist Church of Miami, Florida, tell this story. He said there was a boy in Africa who had been won to the Lord by a missionary. And he was a fast runner. The missionary told the college that he had gone to back in America about that boy. And the college offered him a scholarship if he would run on their track team. He came from Africa and ran on that college track team. And as the story went, they were at the meet, the finals for the season. Came down to the last race, which he was to run. And if he won that race, they'd win the trophy. They lined up, the gun was sounded, they took off, and it looked like he was going to lose the race. And suddenly he hit a spurt of energy and strength, and he ran past all the others and won that race. And they won the trophy. And a little later, the coach asked him, he said, son, it looked like you were going to lose that race, and all of a sudden you got this burst of speed, and you won that race. Can you tell me what happened? He said, yes, sir. He said, that missionary back home that won me to the Lord told me that if I ever needed the Lord, just call him and he'd help you. And he said, coach, it looked like I was going to lose, and I said a quick prayer. I said, Lord, if you'll pick them up, I'll put them down. And he said he picked them up so fast I could hardly put them down, and that's how I won the race. I love that story. 
If you want to win this good race for Jesus, ask for his help. Ask for his help. And I wish you a happy ending to your race. Let's pray. Maybe somebody here today and the Lord speaking to you about becoming a Christian. I wonder if you'd give your heart to Jesus today and come forward. I'll be here at the front to help you. Maybe the Lord wants you to join this church, move your membership, be a part of this wonderful congregation. I'll be here at the front to help you if you will come forward.